First Alert Meteorologist Candace Bowling here. We're wrapping up severe weather preparedness week and this video is going to show you everything that we covered this week, kind of wrapping it all up, giving you one nice place to go and look at everything. You can see the pictures below in the article. So here's a recap of the week. We started off talking about severe weather and tornadoes, talking about how to receive alerts. We had a statewide tornado drill. We learned about lightning and flash flood safety and today we learned how to make a plan. So we're going to kind of go through and recap everything everything for you. So Monday we talked about what makes a storm severe. Well, you need one of the three criteria. You need winds in excess of 58 miles an hour, you need hail one inch or greater, or you need a tornado in a storm. That will automatically give it that severe criteria. And the difference between a watch and a warning is also another thing people talk about. So a watch means just be prepared. Conditions in the atmosphere are favorable to get some severe weather, but it doesn't mean that it, it will always happen. But a warning means take action. It means either the doctor a radar or a train spotter has saw one of those three criteria to reach a severe thunderstorm warning or a tunnel tornado or funnel cloud has been spotted to give a tornado warning. So that's the difference between watch and warnings. That's what we talked about on Monday. Now Tuesday we talked about how to receive alerts. So of course you can download the free WNCT First Alert Weather app. It's going to give you the radar and forecast right there. It also has the First Alert Weather team's videos and blog posts on there as well. You can get the wireless emergency alerts. This automatically comes on many phones and it will automatically sound if there is uh, severe weather in your area. You can, down, you can get the NOAA weather radio. It's a very small fee, just a one-time fee to grab the radio, but you can program it for locations of your choice and it'll automatically sound once you have some kind of warning going off. Now, Wednesday we talked about the statewide tornado drill and what we talked about was getting yourself prepared. So if you live in a mobile home, what do you do? Well, obviously seek shelter immediately because mobile homes aren't exactly the most sturdy of shelters. So you're going to want to get somewhere a little bit more sturdy. And this is where having a plan set up will come in handy. You know, finding maybe a neighbor's house or going to a community shelter, going to a friend's house, uh, just finding somewhere safe and knowing that place beforehand before a storm comes about. Um, so that's one thing to do if you have a mobile home. If you live in an apartment, get to the lowest level of the apartment floor. That would be contacting maybe your neighbors downstairs. You know, and in, in case of severe weather, can I come to your apartment to take shelter? So that's one conversation you may want to have with someone beforehand. Find the interior morphs room. Put as many walls in between you and the outside as possible and stay away from those windows and doors. A lot of this right here is reflected if you live in a house as well. Get to the interior rooms. A basement would be nice but I know a lot of people don't have basements around here so the lowest level of your home is going to be the best place to go. Thursday we talked about lightning safety and lightning is one very unpredictable thing. You cannot predict where a lightning strike is going to happen but if you're outdoors and you hear thunder or see lightning, go ahead and go inside and stay away from any trees, any metal, any kind of water, anything that can help conduct electricity. So that's something to stay away from if you're outdoors. Now, if you're indoors, avoid windows. And I know not many people have corded phones anymore, but you don't want to be on a corded phone. You don't want to be any kind of corded appliances near you. Um, so stay away from stuff like that. And wait 30 minutes until you hear the last clap of thunder. It, you can get lightning strikes miles away from a thunderstorm even after it's already passed. So uh, wait about 30 minutes from the last clap of thunder that you hear. Friday we talked about flash flood safety. So how much water is too much? Well, if you have standing water on the roadways, you don't know how fast the water is moving and it's really hard to tell how deep the water is sometimes. So never try to walk or drive through especially swiftly moving water. Now six inches of fast moving water can actually knock down an adult. 12 inches of water can take away small vehicles, but you can even have lesser amounts than that. 18 or more inches of rain can carry away large vehicles. So, you know, if we get a lot of rain falling at one time, stuff starts flowing through the rivers and you could get some flood prone areas that could lead to some problems. So never try to drive or walk in any of those. Just remember the old adage, turn around, don't drown. Now on Saturday, today, we're talking about how to make a plan. So what can we do? Like we said, have an emergency in in plan already in place. So you're going to want to talk to neighbors, talk to friends, get your family on board about where they go if something were to happen. If a tornado warning happened right now, what would you do? 
Also start thinking about what would you do at your house, maybe the schools, your workplace. Just think about your daily routine and what you would do if something came about. So make sure your family knows who to contact if something happens. That way you can all keep in touch. Many people nowadays all have cell phones, so it's really easy to keep in touch if something happens. Uh, another way to stay is stay weather aware. If you know that we're calling for severe weather on Sunday, go ahead and kind of get that in your mind. Keep checking things constantly. We've got that free WNCT First Alert weather app. We're on Facebook and Twitter pretty regularly. We're on our websites, uh, a lot of avenues, and of course you can get us online, on air, and on your mobile devices to stay safe. That's our number one goal. It's for you to stay safe. So hopefully a lot of good tips for you. Hopefully you can get some emergency plans in place and Here's to hopefully having a quiet, severe weather season.